Good evening, sports fans. This is George with Custom Tide Flies and Guide Service. And this evening, boys and girls, we are going to be building a uh, CT articulated Helgramite. This is a size six. Um, so the basic stuff you're going to need, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to need uh, a uh, 2X long shank streamer hook and uh, a number six, and a, uh, a short nymph hook, or like a wet fly hook, and a size six. Uh, I'm using a, um, <coughs> a uh, Daiichi 22301, <coughs> um, or you could use a Mustad 79580. Essentially the same hook. Um, and then for the, that's for the back part. And then for the front part, I use uh, a Mustad 3906 uh, for the front part. So uh, the thread is a Danville Flymaster in a 140D black. The uh, underbody, if I put an underbody of acrylic yarn um, in uh, the, long part in the back uh, and in the front and uh, the body is uh, Cohen's uh, Cohen's creature Helgramite bodies this is now a hairline product <clears throat> excuse me so uh, uh, the dubbing is uh, I'm using the uh, Hairline Hairs Ear Plus in uh, a dark olive. That's for the overbody. Um, using uh, this uh, thin steel cable that, uh, oh, yeah, I got that at Hairline too. Um, you could also use uh, Senyo Standard Intruder Trailer Hook Wire, but uh, <clears throat> it's your bug. Use what you want. The head is a Flyman Stonefly head in uh, large, and you just, it's a bead. It's tungsten. You just slip it over the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the point of the hook and slide it up on the head and I'll show you how to put that in place here in a minute. So, uh, you're also going to color, you have to color the, uh, the body with, uh, Sharpies to get the color to be correct. And, uh, I use these, um, uh, master's touch, um, uh, alcohol pens i get them at hobby lobby they're i don't know three or four dollars a piece and then uh once you get it all built then you coat it with uv resin and i'll show you that here in a second too so uh without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and mount this well Need to smash down the, and I just broke it. <clears throat> so let me get another one. Smash down the eye, or use a straight eye. Um, there we go. Uh, streamer hook. You're going to get tied in, build you a thread base, and you're going to go just a bit past the point of the hook, and you got your piece of acrylic yarn.
couple half hitches here. You gotta build a bump. This pile of yarn right on top of itself. Then go take about three turns to advance the yarn, then make your next bump. So by the time you're done, You got four bumps on the shank. I tie these in in pieces to increase their uh, strength. I also tie them in pieces for production purposes. If you just tie one or two of these, then you're just going to do what you're going to do. So I set this off to the side to dry. And when it's done, uh, here I got my, uh, my hook here. All right. And I want to make sure that my my spacing is right. You see that? You just kind of line your the bend of your hook up with that cross hatch there, um, with where that rib is, and you pop the hook point through so that when this is done it'll swim like this with the point up I'm going to get that out of the way for now go ahead and get tied back in I'm not going to tie in at the head because I don't want to crowd that eye up. I'm going to need that space in a minute. But I do want to make sure I start to define my ribs. I got my little clump of uh, dubbing here. No, oh, pardon the noise. That's my Great Dane. I'm sure th she thinks the world's going to explode because it's windy out. All right, now comes, this is the first tricky part, is getting your body 
laid in as flat and shaped as you can without curling the body up with the thread while you're trying to tie it. Takes a little concentration, but there we go. Dismount it. Make sure you got everything the way you want it. Well, let me get a couple wraps here in front. There we go. Make sure that's good and snug down. All right. Now comes the fun part. Building these dubbing balls so that you get your uh, pronounced segmented body. And your first one goes in right above the first black line. And you just start moving forward. It's not far enough up. <clears throat> There we go. Just above that rib. And move up. Boy, she's very upset.
That dog is the biggest drama queen. The other day, she was going crazy in the living room. She really, really wanted out bad. I thought she had to pee really bad, so I went up and I let her out real. And uh, I, she was going crazy because there was a pigeon in the yard. And she had to go out and chase the pigeon. <sighs> Not quite. That just filled in the gap. Didn't advance much. Still not far up enough. Almost though. I don't get it. A little more. When you look at me doing this, I'm gauging the advance of the dubbing against where the rib is on the skin. By the way, if you don't want to buy these uh, Cohen creature skin bodies, um, they're essentially one millimeter pigskin suede. So, you know, if you want to buy some pigskin suede and cut them out yourself, uh, you know, I do that too sometimes. Just all depends on the look I'm going for. Most.
And you see, like I said earlier, that's why I didn't tie in up behind the eye because I didn't want to crowd it out too bad. Just drop that dubbing on the floor. Up here working close to the eye is not a place to be clumpy. You want a nice smooth rope, and if that means you gotta put just a few fibers on at a time, then that's what you gotta do. See here, I'm, I'm spinning my thread to the right so that I can get a, a thinner profile on the thread. Okay, good. Get a whip on this, hopefully. Uh, all right, well, that's better than none. Okay, let's turn it over and look at the bottom. That bottom looks good. Okay, we're going to take our teaser and brush that bottom out a little bit. Okay. Now you want to make sure that these legs and these ribs are very pronounced. Sometimes you have to go back and recolor them because they uh, they just soak into the suede. They end up looking gray instead of black. This is walnut. All right. Now comes the magic part. Just take your UV resin and paint the whole thing. You don't want it to clump or be thick, really, in any of the places. You want it to soak in. And 
And if you get too much on there, you can kind of take it off with your thumb or something. That's usually what I do. I'll take a rag. Hit it with the light. Now you got your bottle with your little nozzle on it. This is where you're going to put your ribs in. I usually start in the back. And you just put a little raised line. right across that black rib. Now you got this part here in the, the tail. You're going to paint that. And we can paint the other side. The UV resin kind of soaks in, darkens up the um the ink. thing I think is neat is it gives the body a little firmness, but it doesn't make it stiff. And you put your little rib here. And you can't see a thing I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. That's the back end. Uh, you're going to set that off to the side. You do the front end. Oh, excuse me. So, in order to get this head uh, to be where it needs to be, I usually use about nine or ten lateral movements to the thread and build up a base so that the bead slides up on it and I'll super glue it in place. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's check. Nope, one more. Ten, eleven, a little more. Twelve, thirteen, almost. Fourteen, fifteen, almost. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That got it. Uh, okay, a little whippity do here. Uh, uh, and you got some super glue. You gotta make sure that your tip's clear. Cause... I get my super glue at the uh, Dollar twenty-five cent store. Get two tubes for a dollar twenty-five. You can't go wrong. You just pull it right into place, just like that. And you put it off to dry. Okay, so once that dries. You're going to mount that get tied in run your thread back part the way over the bend bring it back up <sighs> You get your little pieces of wire here. I usually cut mine ahead of time. So I do. I got my little piece of wire here. And I'm going to use a pair of old chop scissors. I'm going to cut me a piece of wire about an inch long. And I got my little piece of wire. I'm, I'm going to put it up through the eye of the back part of the Helgramite. And bend it. So, so it's kind of folded in two. And then pinch that so I can get this wire attached and that is too far up I'm 
you want the back of your bug to be off the back of the front hook by a little bit, an eighth of an inch maybe. You got plenty of room for it to wiggle around. There we go. And that happens sometimes. You know, you that little jagged ends of wire. Just recover. Okay. Now we'll whip that off. Paint that with head cement. Because you want that sealed and glued. You take that out and you let it sit off to the side a while. Okay. All right, that's all dry and set up. Get tied back in. Now you're going to want a piece, another piece of acrylic yarn. I don't know what happened to the piece I had before. <laughs> But this doesn't need to be as thick. So just pull one of the strands out and that thins it down a little bit. Hey, there's that piece of yarn. Okay, now, so uh, I showed you these before. When you color these, you color them when they're whole, three inches long. And once you've got them colored, then you snip them in two. You got the back part and the front part. Now you take the front part and that goes right on top. That little tab. Pull that back, get you an anchor. Then you're ready for dubbing again.
get you a bowl. Goes in behind the legs. Needs to be bigger. Sometimes you run into a spacing issue, like the front part might be a little bit too big. If that's the case, then you can switch to a, a longer shank front hook, like a 3906B Musted Nymph hook. That's going to be all right. And behind the next set of legs. All right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What's a little drop of? Yeah, of course it doesn't want to cooperate. We'll drop a super glue on there and then just flip that head over and push it into place. And just like with the back, you can take your black Sharpie and recolor the black parts. Don't get too carried away because it'll bleed and then you'll have a problem. Just 
little Walmart walnut here. <clears throat> Paint the whole thing. it with your light. I'm going to bake it a little bit here. And then you got your little tube with your little nozzle put your ribs on there Now you especially want to get, get your head and you want to make sure you get down on the tops of the pinchers. You don't want it to puddle. <clears throat> And there you go. CT articulated hunger mic. Let me see if I can widen that up a little bit. There we go. Last thing I like to do is measure them. It should come out at a little better than two and a half inches. So, uh, Thank you for uh, stopping by. This is George with Custom Tied Flies and Guide Service. Uh, if you like what you saw, uh, please give us a like and subscribe to this uh, YouTube site. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can find us on Facebook at the Custom Tied Virtual Fly Shop by searching Custom Tire 2 C-U-S-T-O-M-T-Y-E-R-0-2. Uh, and you can find us on the web. Uh, it's uh, Custom Tide Flies and Guide Service. That's uh, www.custom-tied.com. Have a splash. Don't forget the dash. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I hope you enjoy tying these as much as I enjoyed showing them to you. Um if you uh, need to get the stuff to build these with, 
uh, just let me know and I'll try to help you best I can. Thank you again and happy tying.